Okay, here we are on part two of the, uh, what the heck was it? It was the Apollo 2000, right? Right. Um, when we stopped in the first part, we found a uh, battery box was broken. That was a problem. The motor wouldn't run. So let's go back like, to the battery box. We removed it. And it was this terminal here that the plastic on top was cracked. It allowed this uh, terminal to push back this way. It's supposed to be all the way forward. There's a little crimped edge right there that crimps onto plastic, which would then hold the piece there. So I glued the original plastic and I've substituted in, this is all styrene plastic, so using styrene glue which actually melts the glue together. It's not a surface glue. It's chemically going to bond the pieces together, but it will have to sit overnight before it'll uh, reach full strength. So there will be a part three, I guess, showing the whole robot together and working because this has to set up and dry all the way. Of course, to repair that, I had to remove it completely from the uh, from the back piece. Okay, so in order to find out why the motor wasn't running when I applied power to it, I needed to completely remove the motor gearbox assembly from the robot. Normally back here you wouldn't see any of this stuff because there was a, a red fiber board on there for the clicker. There's the clicker light flasher. It crimps down, then the fiber board clips over the top and it uh, adds some structural integrity to it, but it also is mainly there just to make the clicking louder. I had to get all that stuff out of the way so I could get into uh, get spray into the brushes of the motor and so that I could lube the very bottom shaft of the motor. I could lube the top here. And even after doing that, the motor was kind of running and not running, so... Um, I figured it was binding somewhere because when I moved the upper gear it didn't turn as free as these toys normally do. So the, really the only gearing that's going on is with the uh, rotary ramp shifter here. And basically there's a little metal ramp right there. And there's a one tooth difference between these two gears. So as it rotates eventually so this gear will try to crawl up that ramp and when it does it'll change the position of this gear down here from being low in the walk position to raising up which then gets into the guns out body rotating position. Well this whole mechanism that rises and lowers on this shaft was uh, was binding. Now it's very free. I lubed that up with some light grade oil, you know like sewing machine oil, gun oil, something like that. Loosen that all up and now that part seems to run okay. Negative is in fact a ground frame. I wasn't sure earlier. I had to check that out. And then here we can see it's running. There it is raising. So it's pulled that little brass gear up and then it should click back down. That would be in walk position right now. So that part's working. Uh, the lights are working. I can't put any of the clicker in that assembly back on there because in order to assemble this in I have to be able to get into four little mounting tabs that are going to reach in there. Next thing I noticed was that the, uh, well I noticed earlier that the body part, this is the main washer that the body sits against this lower part. This sits on top of the walking leg part. But there was a lot of friction between the two. So I took, I knew I was going to have to tear it down apart where enough where I could get this ring out where I could sand this clean and sand this clean down to bare metal. Uh, rust and corrosion in there was just adding too much friction. There's no way that it was ever going to rotate. And you can't, you don't want to lube between these two. It actually causes them to bind up more if you grease that. So you don't normally release that. You'll find when you get the toys new, they're bare metal. They're bare metal for a reason. Um, there are actually two gears here. You can see this great big one around the outside. But this one here, which operates the doors, it actually has some teeth. See them right there? It actually has teeth too. 
And what happens is, is when that's engaged, when that gear that we just talked about on the motor raises up, <clears throat> it engages both this gear and this gear. And when this one runs out of teeth, and that's when you hear the, the clicking sound of the door kind of shakes because it can't go any further. And then it's supposed to spring back. The spring back part, I'm going to have to try to work on that. We have a bit of a problem. On the really old vintage ones, this sleeve that you see right here, which is crimped to this upper spring-loaded part, and then crimp down here. I've tried soldering it. Um, I'm kind of afraid that might be aluminum. And if it is, there isn't going to be a whole lot we can do about it. But that part that's crimped needs to stay crimped as part of this lower so that this spring part here, this return spring mechanism, which I can't demonstrate because it's <laughs> because it's spinning down here. Um, that has to work in order for everything else to work. So I'm going to have to give that some thought. I just got a feeling that if that's steel, I'm going to try soldering it again with a higher power soldering gun and see if I can get the two joined back together. Um, like I say on the older ones where this part, this inner insert is brass, it's very easy with a high powered uh, soldering pencil to join it back to the steel once it starts slipping to fix that. So I'm going to have to fix that. And as long as I had everything all torn down, this is the um, main drive when the gear is all the way down in that motor shaft that we talked about, the one that goes up and down. When it comes down, it engages with this one, which then engages with this white one, which then engages with that one, and that's what causes the walking. Now I've added some white lithium grease to these parts, they were running dry, so got them lubed up, so that should help them rotate a little bit. So, that's where we're at right now. Basically, I've got to try to resolve this uh, fitting here and wait for the uh, battery box back here to completely dry. And once that happens, I can do the reassembly and with any luck everything is going to work so stay tuned for part three.